All right, hello everybody. Welcome to your very first video lecture for Unit 1 here in Biology 201, Anatomy and Physiology. And uh, we're going to start, of course, with Chapter 1 in your textbook. And this first little video clip here, I'm just going to kind of give you an, an uh, introduction to the subject of anatomy and physiology. Okay, so as you may have gathered, this, uh, this course is going to be divided up into two different components. And um, one of those is anatomy, and the other is physiology. And uh, just kind of in a nutshell, anatomy refers to all of the different parts of the body. Physiology refers to the function of all of those different parts, and often at a very detailed level. Uh, for instance, when you're breathing, well, how does that happen? You know, what actually causes your lungs to expand and deflate to allow you to breathe? And how does the oxygen gas that you take in from the air get into the blood so that your uh, blood can take that oxygen throughout the body? You know, what actually makes your heart beat? That's physiology. Whereas anatomy is really more about the study of the structure of the body. And so a lot of people, when they sign up for an A&P class, they're, they've really got in their head, they're just going to memorize a bunch of body parts, and that's only half of the class. The other half involves understanding and learning how the body functions, which is, of course, extremely important as well. Um, now, anatomy, on the anatomy side, there are different types of anatomy. You can study anatomy at different levels or at uh, different uh, time points during the life of a human being. And so usually we're going to be studying what's called gross or macroscopic anatomy. Microscopic, as you guys probably know, that's where you're studying things that you can't really see with the naked eye. You've got to use a microscope to see them because they're so small, like you're getting down to the level of individual cells and tissues and studying those in detail. That would be microscopic anatomy. And we will have some of that. You'll see a lot of that actually on the physiology side when you uh, learn about function, because when you're studying the function of different body systems, it really boils down to what the cells in that body system are doing. The cells are the smallest living functional units of the body. Gross or macroscopic anatomy, these are anatomical parts that you can see with the naked eye, so gross doesn't mean nasty gory here. It's just referring to macroscopic. That's, those are things that you can see with the naked eye. So things like the heart and the lungs or then uh, different divisions of those organs would be part of gross anatomy. Also, you could study developmental anatomy, and you will have some of that as you move through your uh, Biology 201 and 202 course sequence, and that's a study of the anatomy during the development of an embryo and a fetus and how things change over time as you develop from that one little single cell after sperm meets egg, and that one single cell has to divide over and over and uh, create all of your different body parts. That gets into developmental anatomy when you're studying the, uh, those different structures at that time when you're still in the womb. Okay, and then uh, what about physiology? Physiology is the study of function at many levels. Okay, so you are uh, studying how different um, body systems work, what individual cell types within those body systems do to allow that body system to perform its functions, how these different uh, body systems integrate with each other. Your body systems do not act alone. They're always acting in uh, a cooperative fashion with your other body parts, like they're showing you here on this little diagram. Just kind of as a little introduction here, what you're seeing here, this is a representation of your digestive system. Your digestive system processes the foods and the beverages you take in, absorbs nutrients and fluid, and sends those over to your cardiovascular system, your heart and your blood vessels, which then pumps all of those nice things um, outward to all of the tissues in your body so that they have the nourishment that they need and your blood also takes away the wastes that those body systems have generated. Um, over here, they're showing you that your uh, respiratory system, your lungs and some of the tubing associated with that, takes in oxygen gas from the air, gets rid of carbon dioxide gas from your body that has to go back to the atmosphere. And down in here, they're showing you a representation of your urinary system, your kidneys and the bladder and the tubing 
involved with those organs. And what your kidneys do is they take the wastes out of the blood and that creates urine, which you then excrete or release out of your body. So you can kind of see how just those four body systems are all tied together and work together to help you stay alive as a functional human being. Another important aspect of physiology and anatomy is that form follows function. So when you're learning about how uh, anatomical features are shaped and structured and what they're built from, and um, that is really determined by what that organ is supposed to do. For example, your heart over here, uh, its job, its function is to pump blood throughout your body, as you know. So the form of the heart has to follow that function. This is a heart. It's supposed to be pumping blood throughout the body. And so the heart has to be built and constructed in such a way to make that happen. So that is an expression that's often taught at the very beginning of an anatomy and physiology class. So you start thinking about that form. The form of the body, the anatomy, follows the physiology, the function of whatever that particular body part is. All right, so that's just a little quick uh, overview and introduction to anatomy and physiology and you are ready to move forward on to the uh, next video clip, the second one for chapter one.